In this program, we're going to learn how to use timers and also how we can implement tool tips. We're going to have a start button that will start a timer, a stop button to stop it, reset to take it back to zero, and an exit button that will close the program. We can find the timer in the toolbox, and you notice it goes down in the very bottom. It doesn't actually appear right on the form, and it has a few properties, not very many. The interval is 100 at the start. That's milliseconds, so we'll change that to 1,000. Uh, that means it should go for about one second between ticks. We'll change the name to TMR seconds, and notice the enable property is false. At the start, a timer is not enabled. That means it's not actually running. We can make a timer start running, though, with the dot start method. So when we click on the start button, we're going to turn on the timer. Again, we're calling it TMR seconds dot start. That will start the timer. That's not the only way we can get a timer to start running. We can also type TMR seconds dot enabled equals true. Both of these methods are fine. They do exactly the same thing. We're just going to leave the dot start method because it's probably easier to understand, but they're both appropriate. That will cause our, cause our timer to start ticking. More on the tick event coming later. Well, we'll write some code for our stop button, and we want to make the timer turn off. You've probably guessed that will be a dot stop. So TMR seconds dot stop. Once again, there's another way to accomplish this. We can make the dot enabled property equal false. Both do the same thing. They're both appropriate. You may use either one. We're going to leave the TMR seconds dot stop. And again, you can give your timer any name you like. It just should start with TMR. When we double click on the timer object down at the bottom, we get to the tick event. Every time the timer ticks, we want something to happen. And we've set this up to tick every one second. That's what the milliseconds were about for the interval. We're going to declare a variable called int seconds as integer equals zero. And right now we'll make it static so that the value of this is kept every time the timer ticks. We want this to go up on every timer tick by one. So we'll make int seconds plus equal one. And then we want to update the display. It'll have the appearance of maybe a clock on a scoreboard counting up or a stopwatch counting up. We'll have it display what int seconds is. And every 1,000 milliseconds, which we hope is close to a second, it should be, this timer will tick and this code will execute. Take a look. We'll click start to start the timer. And every 1,000 milliseconds or one second the timer ticks, and int seconds goes up by one, and the label is updated. Stop stops the timer. Start starts the timer. And this will just keep going on and on and on. Again, the static allowed the uh, value to be kept every time the tick event was executed or activated. Let's go to the reset button. One thing we want to make sure happens when we reset is that the timer is turned off. Maybe it already was turned off when we hit the reset button. Maybe it wasn't. So we're going to be sure that we call TMR seconds dot stop. Or we could use dot enabled equals false. We're also going to reset the display back to zero. So we'll make the text zero inside the label. We've also got to reset the value of int seconds. That's got to go back to zero. We have a problem, though. That variable exists in a totally different sub as a static variable. This sub can't see it. We're going to have to make this a class level, which we sometimes call a global variable. So we'll take it out from the sub and take it up to the top so that it is a class level and all subs can see it. However, static is not appropriate up here. We would use dim. We only would use static inside of a sub. We'll use dim. And now all the subs have access to int seconds, which is important because we need both our timer tick event to have access to it because it has to increase its value by one and display it. And the reset button needs to have access to it when it is clicked because we've got to set its back, uh, value back to zero. 
Let's watch it in action. We start the timer. We press reset. The timer goes right back to zero and it has stopped. We'll start it again. We'll stop it and press exit. Now imagine we want to actually time something and make the timer stop. For example, 10 seconds. Maybe it's a basketball game and we want to count 10 seconds in the backcourt for a potential violation. So we would like to have this timer stop after it hits 10 seconds. We'll use an if statement. Every time the timer ticks, we're going to check to see if int seconds equals 10. If it does, we're going to make the timer stop itself. Let's see if this works. We'll start our timer and then we'll wait until it gets to 10 and see if it stops. Getting closer. It did. Once the uh, variable equaled 10, the timer stopped. Now, of course, we can start it up again and it will keep on going past 10. If we don't want that to happen, we can disable the start button. Users will not be able to press the start button when the clock hits 10, when the label hits 10, until it is reset. Then when the uh, label reads zero again, we can start all over. So that's what this uh, documentation is going to show, that we're going to disable the start button, forcing a reset in order to use it again. So we'll make btn start enabled false. We'll run this now and check out our work, and we'll see the timer will begin. Our variable is increasing by one every time the timer ticks. And then when we get to 10, you notice the start button is disabled, and we're no longer able to click on it until we press reset. Ah, but when we press reset, we've got to re-enable that start button. So we'll go down to the code for the button reset click event, and we'll enable the start button with btn start dot enabled equals true. So now we'll start our timer, wait until it gets to 10. We know that the start button will be disabled. And then we will also check to see if reset re-enables the button. It does. We can do some more clever things. Maybe we'd like to give a kind of a warning as we're getting close to the end of 10 seconds, especially if we're looking at a potential backcourt violation in basketball. Maybe we would like to change the color of the display for the last two seconds once the clock hits 8 for 8, 9, and 10. So we can check on in seconds. If it's greater than or equal to 8, we want the color to switch to red. We probably could have just said if inch seconds equals 8. So again, notice the timer ticks every 1,000 milliseconds. If we wanted it to go faster, we could have used a smaller number. And yes, we have the numbers changed to red. Of course, when we reset, the numbers are still red. So we'll have to go back, check out the code for the reset click event, and we're going to change the four color of the label back to white. And that should take care of it. So we know that we're going to get a color change when we get to the eight second mark on our timer. That's red all the way to 10. We'll press reset. The color changes back to white. The start button is enabled. Feel free to mess with the interval to see what happens when you use values less than 1,000 and values greater than 1,000 to see how much faster or slower the timer can go. Now let's check out how we can use tool tips. We have to make sure we're on our form, not on a button, but on the form, and go get a tool tip object. And it's going to display down at the bottom right where we see the timer. The most interesting properties are the delays. We'll check those out a little bit more. You can read about them in your book, how long it takes when a, a mouse is over a button before a tooltip appears. 
We'll click on the start button and now you'll notice there is suddenly a new property tooltip on tooltip one and we'll type click to start the timer. We'll put some other messages in the other buttons for stop we'll have click to stop the timer. When users put the mouse or put the cursor with their mouse over these buttons these messages will pop up as tooltips. We'll tell them to reset the click to reset the timer to zero on reset and with exit we will tell them that to click to end the program or click to exit the program. When we run the program and hold the cursor over these buttons, you'll notice these tooltips pop up. Right now they're set to come up uh, in 500 milliseconds, so half a second after the arrow is over, that's when they pop up. There's the initial delay of 500, how long you would like it to wait. Uh, you also have the auto pop delay. And reshow delay. You might want to mess with those numbers if you want to change how long it takes for things to pop up and how long they stay up. You've probably encountered tooltips and programs that you've used, and that's how we can get them into Visual Basic. Also, consider this for a timer. We looked at how we could increase a timer and have it count up. Can you imagine how you could take a timer and make it decrease down to zero?